Are you are you mad for a reason, Josh? You don't want to be here. I'm sorry. No, you got like six more years of schooling at least. Bummer. All right. So on a quadratic, and I'm just going to sketch this one, x squared plus 7, which would be just shifted up 7. The slope is obviously different depending on where you are. Here, the slope is negative, a pretty steep negative. Here, it's still negative, but not as negative. What's the slope right at the vertex? Zero. Okay, some of you know that. The slope is zero right there. It's not increasing or decreasing. And then it starts increasing again, so our slope is positive here. Not overly steep, but positive there. And then it gets more and more steep in the positive direction as we move along here. So we talked about this really in the beginning of pre-calc, but we're going to obviously get more in depth with it. So I'll start from scratch as if you've never seen this before. So the slope at a specific point on a curve is going to be equivalent to whatever the slope of the tangent line is at that point. Now remember, a tangent line is a line that hits the curve at that one and only one location. So like the tangent line here would be something like that. So whatever the slope of that tangent line is, let's say it's negative seven, that would be the slope of the point or of the curve at that point of tangency. So it would be a negative seven slope on our curve there as well. When we get down here, our tangent line is something like that. A little less steep, still negative, but if that tangent line has a slope of negative one, then the slope of the curve at this point of tangency is also negative one. And then here's obviously your reason for the zero slope, because if you draw a tangent line to the curve at the vertex, the tangent line is a flat line with a slope of zero. So the slope of the curve at that location is zero. And then obviously we go here and our tangent line would now be positive. If you move further up the curve, your tangent line gets steeper, more positive. So we're entering this world of the slope is not constant. The slope is changing depending on where you are in the curve as your point moves around a curve. So this first example wants us to find the slope specifically at negative one eight, okay? So I'm gonna draw you another sketch and we're gonna kinda talk about what this is gonna look like because negative one eight is right around there. Oh, you're right, that was one eight, thank you. Negative one eight. Now, typically, to calculate a slope, you need two points, right? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we don't have a second point here. Um, what's that? Okay, you do have 0, 7, but if I calculate the slope between those two points, that's not the same as the slope of the tangent line at this point, right? It's maybe in the ballpark, but it's not the same. So what if we picked a point closer, right? If you picked a point like here, it's still not going to be exact, but it's going to be better. Don't you agree? Okay. So. This is where we came up with, and I'll erase this and kind of do it, and maybe this is gonna sound familiar. We picked a random point. I'm not gonna make it the zero seven because I don't wanna know what it is. Uh, but this is negative one eight. And this is some point that's eight units to the right, okay? so. There's my point that I'm interested in the slope at, and then this one is h units over. So this is going to be x comma f of x. 
so the point that we know, the point that we're interested in finding the slope at. And then this point is going to be x plus h is going to be the x coordinate. And the y coordinate is going to be f of x plus h. So it's the same x coordinate as this one, just we're adding some distance h over. So now we have two points. And we can find the slope between those two points because we can do our slope formula. We can do f of x plus h, y2, minus y1, which is just f of x, over x2, which is x plus h, minus x1, which is just x. So that's going to be the slope of the line connecting those two points. What is that line called? It's not a tangent line, but it's a, do you remember? No. Secant line, correct. A secant line hits the curve in two spots. Now the closer we can pinch those two points together, the more this secant line turns into the tangent line, right? So if I'm, I'm looking for the slope at this point. So if I take this point and kind of drag it along and bring it closer to our point of interest, what is happening to our h value as this point drags closer? It becomes zero, right? It becomes closer to zero. It's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. I can't let it actually be zero because then the points would be on top of each other. We would be back to that one point situation, right? So I can't actually put that h value at zero because a couple things would happen. If I made h zero, the denominator simplifies to just h. So if I brought those two points so close together that they were on top of each other and h was zero, I would have an undefined slope because I would be finding the slope between a point and itself, which doesn't really work. You need two separate points. But the idea that we have to latch onto is that the closer this does become to the point of interest, the more the secant line is essentially the same as the tangent line, okay? And this is where limits are going to come into play because even though we can't find the slope because we can't make h zero, we can find the limit of this as that h value approaches zero. And that is the definition of the derivative. This is how you would get the slope of a curve at a per certain point. You're not doing just the slope formula. You're doing the limit as that h value approaches zero. So that these points are essentially on top of each other without being so. So that we still have two points. Okay? So this is the definition of the derivative. the derivative of a function at some value x, at some x coordinate. So for this particular problem, if we wanted to find the slope at negative 1, we're going to do f of x, well, the limit, we have to always write this down. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So if we plug in x plus h, that's f of x plus h minus f of x, which is just the function itself, x squared plus 7. all over h. This is going to give us my generic derivative formula. And then if I want my actual derivative value or the slope at negative 1, I would plug in negative 1. But I'm going to wait to the end to do that. I'm going to simplify this out. So limit as h approaches 0, 
this is going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus the 7. I'm going to distribute my subtraction, minus x squared minus 7 all over h. Because I put that right in the middle. My numerator, does this look familiar? Do you guys remember doing this? Yeah, difference quotient, exactly. So the x squared minus x squared is going to cancel when I simplify. My plus 7 and minus 7 is going to cancel, so I'm going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared all over h, which now knowing what we know about limits, direct evaluation is going to leave us with 0 over 0. So what does that require? Manipulation. How can we manipulate and simplify here? Simplify by dividing by h. So we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. And now when I now I can directly evaluate the limit as h approaches 0. Plug in that 0, and my derivative is 2x. Now the that's the deriv that's the formula. That's the derivative formula. So the notation, if the function is f of x, then f prime of x is the notation to say the derivative equals 2x, which means the slope at any x value. can be computed by 2x. So if we want the slope at negative 1, 8, we're essentially finding the slope at an x value of negative 1. So f prime of negative 1 means the slope at negative 1 is 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So if we look back at our image here, can we all agree that it should have been a negative slope? Right? Now that we have the formula, kind of take a look at what happens if we look at the slope, oh, let's say at an x value of negative 10, which is way, way, way over here. Right? Shouldn't it be a steeper negative? Isn't the slope here still negative but much steeper? And look what happens if you plug in negative 10 f prime of negative 10, meaning the slope at negative 10, is going to be negative 20, which is a much steeper one. Right at 0, which was the vertex, you told me that the slope was 0. So if I look at f prime at 0, I get 0. Once you move past 0 and you, like, at positive 1, f prime at 1 is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, and, and you see that the graph is now positive. It's increasing. And, and your derivative at 1 gives you a positive slope, which is only going to get more and more positive as you plug in bigger x values. Okie doke. Any questions? Okay. So now here's a function that's a little bit different. You, we should know what that looks like. It is a graph that looks like this. And we're looking for the slope of the tangent line at 16. So let's pretend that's 10 and that's 20. So somewhere in here we're trying to find the slope of it. It's pretty close to 0, isn't it? These don't ever get completely flat, but they start to flatten as you move forward. So it looks like the tangent line, and therefore the slope of the curve at that location, is going to be pretty close to zero. Is it going to be positive or negative? We expect it to be positive because for a lot of these graphs, especially early on, we should know what they look like. So we should have an idea as to what our derivative or our slope is going to be. So to find the slope of the tangent line, or the derivative, it's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So we have to plug in an x plus h to be root x plus h minus f of x all over h.
And again, direct evaluation is going to give us zero over zero. So how do we manipulate something like this? Rationalize the numerator. So that would be multiply by the conjugate over itself. So in my numerator, when I FOIL, I'm going to get x plus h. And these are conjugates up top, so the outer and the inner multiplications are going to cancel. And then negative root x times positive root x is minus x all over. And we're not going to multiply out the denominator. Usually when you rationalize, you only multiply out that conjugate portion. You leave the other side alone because that's going to help the cancellation be more obvious. And this still all has the limit as h approaches 0 in front of it. So now when we simplify the numerator, the x minus x cancels. And here you can see why it was smart not to distribute the h. Because that h is what's causing the problem in the denominator. It's making our denominator 0. So now we have h over h, which cancels. So this is just the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over root x plus h plus root x. And so we've manipulated and simplified, so let's try to redirectly evaluate. So the limit as h is approaching 0. Remember what that means, too. Just don't lose sight of the context. Why are we finding the limit as h approaches 0? Because we're pinching the two points as close together as we possibly can. Okay, that's the idea there. And now that we've simplified that h in the denominator, now we actually can assume h is 0. So we plug in our 0 and we get root x plus root x, which is 1 over 2 root x, and that's our, that's our derivative. So f prime of x, the derivative of this function, is given by the equation 1 over 2 root x. So we can find the slope on this curve anywhere. Yep. I plugged in an h of 0. So root x plus 0 just became root x. I could, I could put that in there. You want to just see it. And then it's just root x plus root x. So now a couple things I want to point out here. First of all, let's answer the question. They wanted the slope at 16. So f prime of 16 is 1 over 2 root 16, which is 1 over 2 times 4, 1 eighth. So like we said, a pretty small slope, still positive. Yes? <laughs> pretty close to 0, but not 0. Okay? couple things to think about here. Just looking at the graph, what do you think the slope is right here? One. Anybody else have any ideas? Let me ask you this. Is it increasing or decreasing right here? If you were doing an interval notation question on tell me when this graph is increasing or decreasing, what is it doing right at zero? Is it increasing or decreasing? What would you say? Neither. We always say at an end point, it's neither increasing nor decreasing, which means it can't have a slope there either. So let's think about that. Why can't it have a slope? Well, we talked about, obviously, contextually, why it can't have a slope. But in terms of the equation, if you tried to evaluate what is the slope at an x value of 0, f prime of 0 is going to give you an undefined. And that's correct, because there is no slope at that point. There is no slope at an end point. Now, just after that slope, Liam, I think maybe 1 is a good guess, right? Like if you did f prime of like 0 0.01, I would, you'd need a calculator of that, but if you did f prime of 0 0.01, that would be an interesting limit question in and of itself. What would the slope be as you approach 0? So as you get infinitely close to 0, so the limit of this as x, approach is, as x is approaching 0 from the right. 
would be a good question. And you plugged in like 0 .0001, and it is approaching one over a teeny tiny number. It's only getting teenier and tinier. I have to think about that. Now I got my own self thinking. Um, this is obviously beyond what we're doing right now. I'm just letting my mind wander. Um, also of note is what's the slope of this function at negative four? You would say it doesn't exist, probably because the graph doesn't even exist. And certainly if you check that, f prime of negative four is gonna give you one over two times the root of negative four, which does not exist for obvious reasons as well. Okay? So on this one, find the slope of a tangent line at this certain point. This one I, is pretty obvious if you look at the function. The function is a line. So this is one where no matter where you are on the line, what's your slope going to be? Four. So ideally, you get, you know, you don't get so caught up in cranking out the derivative that you can just say, well, that's a funny question. What's the slope of the tangent line to a line? It's just going to be that slope no matter where you are. But let's see from our definition perspective why that happens. So we're going to do it anyway, even though we already know the answer is 4. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h this is going to give us 4x plus 4h plus 2 minus 4x minus 2 making sure you're always distributing that negative on the minus f of x part as we're writing this and kind of simplifying it down it is incredibly annoying to constantly be writing this limit as h approaches 0 but on the AP exam this is kind of one of those notational things. You can't, you have to, it has to read correctly every single time. So you have to keep that limit out in front. It's something that I'll be looking for when you're doing open response questions because you, you know, I have to start training now. You will lose points for not having that and not writing it out notationally correct. So you'll see the step when we get rid of that. But as we're simplifying 4x minus 4x, 2 and 2 leaves us with 4h over h which simplifies to just four. Now, when I go to, once I've simplified down, when I go to reevaluate after that manipulation, now is when I can stop writing that limit as h approaches zero. I pretty much just plug in zero, which there is no h to plug zero into, so what is the limit of any constant? Itself, correct. So if you plug 0 into 4, where there's no h to be plugged in, it just remains 4. Okay? So thinking back in the context of a limit, when you're looking for the limit of a function, this is just, the function is just a horizontal line at 4. Right? So the limit of this as h approaches 0, so as you approach 0 from the right and as you approach 0 from the left, you're at four, no matter which side you're coming from, obviously. So, again, even though this is entirely unnecessary, if you are just thinking and not being like a machine, you realize a line has a slope of four no matter where you're at, so the answer is four. So your derivative formula is just a constant. It's always four. So whether you're at an x-coordinate of 1 or an x-coordinate of 17 or an x-coordinate of 152, your slope is always going to be 4. And then this last one here, 
which is a rational function, 2 over x looks something like this. We're looking for the slope at 1, 2, so somewhere in here. So what kind of slope do we expect, positive or negative? Yeah, the tangent line looks about that, so we do expect a negative slope. That just helps us, you know, kind of know if our answer is right or not. So when I do my derivative, f prime of x equals, the derivative is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Direct evaluation is going to give me 0 over 0. So what's my manipulation look like in a case like this? Right. Yep. Clear the fractions. So my least common denominator of the fractions within the fraction is x plus h times x. So if I multiply the numerator by x times x plus h and the denominator by x times x plus h, In my numerator, when I distribute, that first distribution is going to cancel the x plus h. It's going to leave me with 2x. The second distribution is going to cancel the x's. It's going to leave me with minus 2 times x plus h. All over in my denominator, I'm not going to distribute anything. It's going to be h, x, x plus h. So when I simplify out that numerator, 2x minus 2x is going to be gone, minus the 2h, it's going to be negative 2h up top, over h, x, x plus h. And my h, which is the problem, which is what was making my denominator 0, is going to cancel this h with this h. And now I can directly evaluate. Now that I've simplified it out, down to just being negative 2 over x, x plus h, now I can directly evaluate. So this is when I can stop writing limit as h approaches 0 because I'm about to plug in that 0 for h. Negative 2 over x times x plus 0 gives me negative 2 over x squared. And remember, that was my derivative. So this is my derivative formula. So I can use that formula to find the slope of my curve at any x value I want. So at 1, so f prime of 1 is going to be negative 2 over 1 squared is going to be negative 2. That's the negative slope we expected. What's going to happen to my slope as I go towards infinity? Closer to 0. Let's test one just for fun. If I do f prime of 10, that's going to be negative 2 over 10 squared, which is negative 2 over 100. Getting closer to 0, right? Still always negative because it's still decreasing. But the slope is getting closer and closer to 0 because it's pretty much flatlining along our horizontal asymptote, right? And flatlining means it's approaching a slope of 0. The slope at 0, what do you think the slope at 0 is going to be? No, it's not going to exist. You can't have a slope of the curve at a location where the curve doesn't even exist, right? This is a vertical asymptote. So if you went to try to see what the slope was at an x value of 0, you're going to get negative 2 over 0 squared, which is undefined or does not exist. And the reason being is because the function doesn't even exist. So your derivative your derivative is not going to give you a slope if the function function doesn't even exist at that location. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so calculating the derivative is really doing what we did in pre-calc, the difference quotient. It's just now there's that limit as h approaches 0 in front of it all. Because now we've done limits and we understand that context. And now we actually understand why we are letting h approach 0. 
because we're bringing those two points, the slope formula between those two points, we're bringing them infinitely close together so that secant line becomes one with the tangent line. Okie doke. So kind of all coming together. Your homework is right there. Not a whole lot because there's obviously a lot of work.